Okay, well, look, we've had uh, we've had some fun with this, but there's a very serious side to uh, what it is that you're you're doing. We've got a caller on the line. I'd like you to talk to if you're agreeable to that, and that is uh, Tom in California. Hi, Tom. Uh, how you doing? You're on with uh, Tara. You got a question for her? Very good, and um, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, about nine and a half years ago, uh, I, first of all, I'm uh, in a heterosexual relationship, uh, married for 15 years. Um, my wife um, and I lost our son nine and a half years ago at birth, and it greatly affected my wife to a point that uh, she never wanted to have sexual intercourse or have any more children. Um, eight years ago, we did have a child, and it was a very um, difficult pregnancy. And after our daughter was born, she, she no longer. No, oh, did we lose him? Uh, well, I think we know we got the. Oh, there you are. There you are. So she no longer wanted to have sex at that point. We've got you, Tom. Uh, let's let uh, Tara uh, uh, deal with that. Hey, Tara. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for calling. And so. What I'm hearing you say is that your wife didn't want to have intercourse anymore after the birth of your child. Is that correct? That's what he said, yeah. The first time was after the death of our child at birth and then after the uh, subsequent birth of our daughter. Yeah. Uh huh. And I just think that a tragedy like that really impacts us on a very deep level. Um, as a mother, I can just imagine the loss of a child. I, I've never had to live through that, so I, I, I'm sorry for your loss, truly. I Thank you. It's an awful thing to experience. And I can really see where it's a difficult place for your wife to be and that she really needs to understand how to reconnect to herself sexually. And I think that oftentimes we as mothers put others first and we don't look at our own pleasure and our own satisfaction, and I think that there's some guilt in that, that there's some guilt that we feel that we don't deserve that, and I think that when we're able to embrace that, that we absolutely need that, that we need to nurture and support our partners in a sexual way and ourselves, that then we're able to move forward, And but I think the grief is really important to be dealt with first. Okay. So we, we, saw, we saw that counseling. Um, we went to counseling for almost three years. We stopped going to counseling. Uh, it's been five years now since we stopped counseling, and the situation is uh, is no better. Well, can you give me any direction to, you know, should I probe for more counseling? Are there certain grief counselors that deal with this better? What can you, what can you tell me? Yeah. Well, what I would say is that going to see a couples counselor is a great um, idea. And the reality is, is that a lot of couples therapists don't talk about sex. So when sex is the issue, you really need to see a sex therapist, somebody who's not afraid to talk about sex when you're coming in as a couple. And so I understand that you went to see a couples therapist, and I would recommend to see somebody specifically for sex therapy. And... Right. If your wife feels like she needs to see an individual counselor to deal with the grief, I think that might be a way as well. Also, I know that there are bereavement groups for women who have lost children, and I think those are an excellent opportunity for women to be in a setting with other women and really normalize the experience because they've all lived through that horrific experience. Right. Okay. Tom, hey, thank thanks, you for your time. thanks very much for the call, Tom. Uh, we appreciate it. We're having a fascinating conversation with uh, Tara Galli Arno. She's a sex therapist. Uh, and uh, we got another call for you, uh, Tara. We got uh, Hugh in Jacksonville. Hey, Hugh, how you doing? Doing fine. How are you doing? I'm great. You're on the line with Tara. Well, uh, I'm 75 years old and still active. I try to find a woman, and I'm single, uh, in my anywhere near my age group, let's say from 65 on up. And many, many, many of them have never experienced oral sex. And it's something that I like very much, but it's very difficult to get them. They, Some of them think, oh, that's nasty, you know? And uh, I, I think quite differently. And it's 
I, I uh, just wonder how I should handle that situation. Tara? Well, hi, Hugh. Thank you so much for your question. I'm so excited that you're 75 and still sexually active. I love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love it, too. <laughs> yeah. I think that's such an important part of making sure that we are healthy as we grow older, that we are sexually active. And I think finding a compatible partner is difficult. It is. What I would... What I would recommend is that if you like oral sex and you like to give oral sex and you like to receive oral sex and your partner is not so into that, that maybe you can find something that they are into and that they really like, and then maybe you can work both into the repertoire. So you're giving oral sex or you're receiving oral sex, and then maybe you're doing something to stimulate her. That isn't something that you normally do, but she really likes. Yeah. You know, recently I uh, dated a just a wonderful woman for about a year, and uh, she was very much like, she was married for 52 years to the same man, and the only man that she had ever been intimate with. And when we finally, when I finally did manage to encourage her to try it, I created a monster. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay, I, Hugh, uh, that's enough detail there for me. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess I guess that's a possibility as well, Tara, right? I guess so. Uh, she must have really liked it. That's great. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, well, well, this has been absolutely fascinating, uh, uh, Tara. I, um, by the way, Hugh, thank you very much uh, for your call. I think you got your advice there. Uh, fascinating, Tara. I'm very pleased uh, we got you on today. That's really great of you. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure, Simon. You know, I hope to share more about having better sex on America Now in the future. There you go. Do, do you want to give out a, a website or something? I do. People can contact me at bouldersextherapy.com, and I send out free newsletters. I've got a great blog that you can read on my website, and I often host workshops that people can fly into and come to beautiful Boulder, Colorado.